planet Earth. Is there another one somewhere out there in the universe that is exactly like it? Today we're going to take a look at possible candidates that NASA has found to date and we're going to find out what they look like, if there is possibility for us to settle on them one day and specifically we're going to land on them and walk around. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And today we're going to be using Space Engine to go out there into our galaxy, nearby stars in our galaxy, and uh, land on the Earth-like planets that we know for a fact are in habitable zone. In other words, they are um, they have a high chance of having liquid water and possibly support life. And we know that if one day we actually make it to those planets, we might even be able to survive on them. There is three candidates that are really strong candidates essentially they have very very good possibilities of being terrestrial and earth-like and two more candidates that we're going to take a look at that maybe are good and maybe are not but before we go anywhere let's just do zoom out here for a second just so i can explain to you really quickly what a terrestrial planet and an earth-like planet uh, means so this is our Earth, this is Sun, this right here is the orbit of Venus, and this right here is the orbit of Mars. Right between Mars and Venus, there's this band that we call uh, Goldilocks Zone, which is also known as Liquid Water Belt or Ecosphere. This is essentially the... Um, region of a star or a distance from a star where it's possible for us to actually have liquid water because if you're too close it's going to evaporate if you're too far it's going to freeze but if you're in here it's possible to have water that is in liquid form which is of course essential for life and so when NASA looks for these ex exoplanets, ex extraterrestrial planets, it always tries to find planets in this particular zone because that's essentially where we would expect a planet to be very Earth-like. All right, so there, like I said before, there's five candidates, but we're going to start with the three strongest ones. And the first strongest candidate is called Kepler-62f. We're going to jump to it. This is actually the farthest candidate as well at a distance of about 1200 light years away. Now, it's a beautiful looking planet. And unfortunately in the space engine, it's a little bit on the hot side because if I were to look up, I would realize that I'm a little bit too close to the sun. But nevertheless, we're going to land on it because what we've discovered about this particular planet is that it is actually far enough from the sun to avoid uh, desiccation and avoid loss of water. And it's far enough from uh, from its star, also known as Kepler-62, to essentially um, preserve some kind of atmosphere and possibly um, liquid water and other elements needed for uh, sustainability of life. Now, in Space Engine, unfortunately, this is called a hot Oceania. This is why it's so dark in there. It's actually very dark, it's very, very hot, and the temperature currently is very similar to Venus. It's about uh, 450 degrees Celsius. So it's not well represented in this game, but in reality, it's possibly a little bit cooler than that. Here, however, you can see that even on the other side of this planet, it gets a little bit too hot. A slightly closer candidate is right here, Kepler-442b. It's a, this is about 1120 light years away. And uh, this is, in this game at least, a scorched desert with a temperature of 1200 degrees Celsius. But we've discovered that it's actually not as close as it is in this game because if I look behind me, somewhere out here, is the star it's very very close to us it's ridiculously bright so that is why in space engine this particular planet is essentially uninhabitable and um is a scorched desert as just as it says in this dialogue description right here it's a scorched desert but nevertheless we do think that this planet is actually a lot more earth-like than it looks uh, like in this game and uh it has a more mild temperature possibly anywhere between minus 30 to uh plus 50 degrees celsius and uh, it, the gravity here is a little bit stronger. It's about 30% more gravity than on Earth. So for me, being a slightly short person, if I come here, I'll be a little bit shorter because I'm going to get squeezed uh, toward the planet. No, not really, but it will be more difficult to jump and it's definitely going to be a little bit more difficult to walk here as well. And so that's Kepler-442b in the system of Kepler-442, which is approximately 1100 light years away from us. And as you can see, because of its proximity to the sun, it's actually creating this beautiful tail behind it as well. But only in this game, that's because it's losing a lot of the atmosphere. 
And it looks even more beautiful if I accelerate time and let this run for a few years just to show you what it looks like. This is the planet losing its atmosphere as it orbits this star. All right, so what's our next candidate? This candidate is actually a little bit closer, and it's another one of the planets that was found by the Kepler telescope, and this time it's called Kepler-186f. This particular planet is only about 490 light years away, and there's quite a lot of uh, terrestrial planets in this particular system, but this planet is actually, even in this game, looks a lot more Earth-like than the other ones I just showed you. So let's actually land on this beautiful planet and check it out. Look, uh, let's walk on its surface and see what it looks like closer to the ground. So there you go. So there's atmosphere, there's a de desert-like environment. Uh, the temperature, according to the game, is minus 87 degrees Celsius, but it's quite possible that it's actually a lot warmer here, mostly because um, th this one is actually relatively close to its star which is right there, and you can actually see an, an alignment of other planets that orbit um, the star. And this is called F because it is not the first, not the second, but the sixth planet that we found from this particular star. And we think that this particular planet is actually located in the habitable zone and may actually have a, a really high chance of hosting um, Earth-like environment. But let's actually zoom out for a second and see how well this game generates other planets. And let's go to one of the closer planets here. We're going to zoom into this area and uh, check out some of these other planets orbiting 186 um, Kepler, just to see if one of them is a little bit better for uh, for us to land on, at least in space engine. So we have Kepler 186b, which is still a little bit too hot. 186c too hot. 186d even hotter. And 186e is a warm Terra. Interesting. So maybe in this particular system, we might actually have more luck than in other systems because uh, we have found six planets here and possibly at least one of them might be uh, good enough for us to have life on them or at least to host our, um, our life that we bring with us. And so this particular planet in Space Engine actually seems to have liquid water. And as we fly through the atmosphere here, we're approaching some sort of a mountain that seems to have some sort of a small lake close to it so let's check it out let's see what it looks like this mountain has a snow cap and there is definitely liquid water right in this area in this region and so this is actually a pretty good representation of what kepler 186f might look like because we think that it might actually be very similar to to the way you you see it represented here because the star here is a little bit dimmer than um than our sun and so it wouldn't actually produce as much um, light, but it would definitely produce uh, enough light for this planet to receive just a good amount of radiation so that it's actually relatively warm. And we can see that there's actually deposits here f um, from different ages that this mountain experienced. Anyway, so that's uh, Kepler 186F and, uh, or technically 186E, but this is what F would look like in real life, probably. And so now let's actually talk about a few more uh, candidates that are not as as good as these three but might be actually still very earth-like and might even be able to host life on them as well and the first one we're going to take a look at is in a system called wolf uh, 1061 or 1061 this is actually a super earth in other words it's a planet that is much larger than earth but may also be a gas giant and not specifically a terrestrial um or um a rocky planet but it nevertheless it might still be a rocky planet as well so this one is called wolf uh, 1061 c and i think this is the one we're looking for right here so it's a little bit cold here and these these are asteroids oh look at that there's actually comets in this system that's awesome wolf uh, 1061 has random comets just right here in front of um in front of our view uh, so, okay, let's find, uh, let's see if there's a planet that actually has slightly better temperature. I don't think there is one. These are all very, very cold, but there's quite a lot of planets in this system, so we might be able to discover one more. These are gas giants. That's a gas giant as well. And that planet is also very cold. All right, so let's move back to um, Wolf 1061C, which is right here. And the temperature, it says, is minus 54 degrees Celsius. 
Now, the interesting thing about Wolf uh, 1061C is that um, one year here would only last about 18 days. So there's actually a very high chance that this planet is tidally locked. What this means is that only one side always faces the star. Oh, this is so beautiful. I'm going to remove this for a second. This is so beautiful. Look at this. Whoa, this is crazy beautiful. And um, so, yes, only one side is facing the star. The other side might always be cold. So this region right here, known as Twilight uh, region, might be actually where we could settle one day. If it's too hot here, too cold here, we might actually be able to live here. And, but the other thing is that this planet is actually 10 times more massive than Earth, so the gravity here would be a lot more massive as well, as much as 60% more than gravity on Earth. Or in other words, if you were to walk here, you would feel 60% heavier than you would in, um, on Earth. And jumping here would be a lot more difficult as well. Now, I don't see any surface here, although it does seem to have something on the bottom. But since this is an ice giant, it's very likely that this is represented as... And not, uh, an actual gas giant, so this might be just the upper atmosphere here. But what's really impressive in this particular planet, at least in this game, is obviously the skies. Look at what you can see here. This is absolutely gorgeous. Let's see if we can... What is that big orange blob here? Is that a comet or is that a star? I can't even tell. It's so bright. And unfortunately, I can't seem to select it either, but I'm guessing it's a, some sort of a very, very large... Um, comet or an asteroid let's see what happens we're gonna run the simulation a little bit more and watch it fly there it is yeah it's a comet wolf 1061 c 17 which suddenly disappeared where did it go it was so beautiful anyway moving on to the last body which i personally think is my favorite the last planet that is a very very strong candidate for being a terrestrial planet that also seems to be a really really cool exoplanet is called Gliese 667. Let's go check out Gliese and I'll tell you why it's really really cool. And here it is, beautiful Gliese 667c. This planet is actually interesting for several reasons. One of them is that it appears in one of the science fiction uh, stories, movies slash uh, comic books slash uh, books, Aliens vs. Predator. Um, in Aliens vs. Predator, uh, Wayland Corporation actually colonizes this beautiful planet, and this happens in 2034. And it's one of the more, uh, it's one of the first colonies, as a matter of fact, where people decide to settle before, obviously, aliens decide to come in and. Uh, kill everyone. Uh, the other thing that's really interesting about this planet is that if you look in the skies, you'll notice that there is one, two, and three stars. That's right. This is actually a triple star system. In other words, living on this planet would be absolutely amazing. You have um, a terrestrial planet. Actually, as, as a matter of fact, I think this is the only terrestrial planet we've found so far that has three stars that has uh, essentially three stars or, um, in the sky. And, you know, if you thought the scene from Star Wars where Luke Skywalker uh, gets to see two stars um, in the skies of Tatooine was cool, try coming here first. So this would be a pretty amazing, pretty incredible world to live on, a pretty ing incredible world to settle, because uh, the triple star uh, would actually, actually create really cool effect in the sky. And let's pretend to stand on the surface here and run the simulation for a few hours just to see what the day and night cycle looks like here. So this planet seems to be tidally locked to the star, meaning that it's always facing the same way. But we don't really know if it is uh, really tidally locked. In real life, it actually might have um, day-night cycle and might have a very interesting day-night cycle because you would always have or almost always have at least one of these stars um, in the sky, and you'll obviously see other planets as well, because it's not very far from the main star. And the, the thing is, these stars are not very bright, so uh, it wouldn't really be that bright on the surface, but because you would receive so much um, starlight from other stars, it would actually be relatively warm here, and uh, because a lot of the sunlight that comes here is actually infrared, this, uh, this planet would be pretty warm in general. So there is actually another star or two stars the other two stars that we just saw pass by let's go in and take a look at them as well we're gonna zoom out here look at this beautiful planet and then i mentioned that in this game it also has rings you can actually see rings orbiting around this planet as well uh we're not sure if there are rings or not uh but in this game there definitely are um one thing though that might not be very good for this planet is that one year is only 29 days long 
So that means the seasons here would be very, very fast if they do exist, because we're not sure if this planet ha it has any inclination. Uh, so yeah, seasons would be super fast. You would have a lot of sunlight coming from the main star or from these two other stars that are right here, a little bit farther away from, from the planet of Gliese 667C. Uh, but these two stars are orbiting around one another. You can see them sort of... Um, having these two very eccentric orbits and these two stars are in the center whereas the other star orbits around them and this is where Gliese 667c is orbiting around the third star farther away from everything else and so here we go so that's the system where these other planets are orbiting but the good thing about uh, this system is that there's at least three other rocky planets. So even if Gliese 667c is not very hospitable for us, it's very likely that two other planets, Gliese 667a or b, might be actually habitable and we might be able to live on them. And anyway, so those are the five candidates I wanted to, to look at. And this one is definitely my favorite. And uh, I think as of 2016, May 2016, these are essentially the five planets we have the most hope for. And if one day we discover how to travel faster than light or how to get to those planets really, really fast, they're definitely going to be our first targets um, because they're, they seem to be the ones with the most opportunity for life sustainability and for having liquid water on the surface. And anyway, we're back to Earth now because those are the only five objects I wanted to take a look at as they give us the most hope in the future if one day we become a space traveling race and decide to colonize more worlds. My bet is on Gliese 667C because it's a beautiful world in Space Engine and because it's actually the closest world to us and also because that system has more planets for us to colonize. Um, even if Gliese 667C doesn't actually turn out to be very comfortable. But anyway, I guess time will show what will happen to us. And for now, we have to make sure that we take care of this world because this is probably the most terrestrial planet we know, the most comfortable planet we know so far, and definitely will stay that way for quite a while. Hopefully, we won't make it any worse. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate all of your comments and all of your help. All of your support means a lot to me, and I'll see you in the next video where we'll talk more about other space things, space planets, and discover something else cool about space, the universe, and something else. If you've enjoyed this video and haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to like and share this video with your friends. I'll see you in the next video. Give me later. Bye-bye.